personal dark knows how to play it. Absolutely. We even saw Corruptors coming out of it before. Oh, yeah. And we are into game number two, guys. We are pumped. Funker and myself could oh, not yeah. be more excited for this match. Semi-finals match number one in Intel Extreme Masters. Gyeonggi continuing here between Innovation and Dark. Funker, you can do this one. Off you go, mate. All right. In the top of Vani Research Station, he is the Zerg player in the red. This is dark. Oh, lovely growl, man. Ah, lovely growl. There I you go, there you go. It. And in the bottom side of the map for the Terran race, he is the blue Terran innovation. Woo. I'm feeling that energy from you, man. Of course. And that's not surprising at all, considering this series uh -oh. and this and this, uh, this venue. Yeah, too much passion, man. Too much. There's too much no such passion. thing. No, there's no, there's no, there's no such thing as too much passion. So Vani Research Station, it's another one of those maps that I feel mech quite powerful on. Oh, yeah. Uh, it definitely was in the past when it was around uh, in the sort of early stages of part of the Swarm, I think like early 2015. Um, but once again, with mech getting that buff from Blizzard at 3.8, absolutely another good map for it. Yeah, so he's going to start with a CC first, Innovation that is, uh, against the Hatchery first of Dark, which doesn't tell us that much. The, the only thing I could I could actually tell you about that is that the last time that I've seen Innovation going for a CC first in the TBZ matchup, he transitioned into the same strategy that we've seen in Game 1, with the double factory Hellion Cyclone into Mech. So it could be that, but also, if you remember, in the quarterfinals between Beyond and Dark, Beyond played uh, bio mine uh, on a Vani research station and worked towards his advantage because Bjorn won that game. So both strategies are totally wide open and we'll see what he decides to do. Yeah, time will tell you. Doc, uh, generally as you'd expect, you're going for uh, three hatcheries here pretty quickly. Um, did he take that? No, he did two at hatchery first there. We had we did see Tark versus Bjorn, and it may have been just for Bjorn, because yeah. you know Bjorn loves Reapers. Uh, going spawning pool first, pretty much every game. I think every game in that series, bar one maybe, where he was uh, just being as safe as possible in the early game. This game, however, you know, he's playing as Innovation. He knows Innovation wants mid-game. He feels very, very strong in it, so hatch first makes a lot of sense. That, that's what I love about those players. When you when you actually reach that, that perfect level that those guys are playing at, those, those TBZ masters, they're not playing just, you know, standard play. They're, they're actually playing their opponents. And as you mentioned, we've seen pool first game in, game out from Dark against Beyond, against Innovation. You know what? He's a macro monster. This is Vanny Research Station. Of course he's going to go for CC first. I'm not going to go for that pool first, you know? Yeah. He's just making the right decision. Like, we are already like two minutes and 30 seconds into the game, and I'm already loving everything that Dark is actually choosing to do. Yeah, some of the beautiful things about StarCraft as a fan and also a commentator and all you guys watching at home, all you fans, you passion lords sitting in your Twitch chat right now. Um, it's just so cool to see these players at this higher level. Like, nothing's dying here. There's no explosions, there's no blood, there's no gore, there's no action. It's just the early stages, both players powering for their decision and their build here. But it's so cool to see these little moves come under, uh, under scrutiny from us one at a time here. We've got innovation again, yeah. Just the same build as last game. Mm -hmm. Alien Cyclone, so the double factory with the reactor and Dark wants to see what's going on inside Innovation's main because we've seen that Marine that fend off that overall that took a little bit of damage. So he's gonna go for the overload speed. He wants to know what's going on. Yeah, he loves overload speed. He even mentioned it in his, uh, in his interview. This is the kind of thing that he likes to do. He wants to be safe. He wants to know what's going on. He needs to react. Zerg is a very reactionary race. It's hard to sort of uh, set the tempo in this matchup, unless you're like, you know, going for a really fast pull speed or something like that. Um, which we have seen Doc do, by the way. Uh, heading across the map here, just that third oh. hatchery. It looks like it was cancelled. Yeah, he, it he built it in the wrong, uh, the wrong position, okay. I think, but realized it instantly, so cancelled it to avoid just, you know, losing minerals every minute. That's actually a pretty big mistake that he could have done. Yeah, so that's, uh, good, uh, good on him to actually realize it before it was too late. So double Hellion and double Cyclone production, which means once again, he will need to to do a little bit of damage with it because this is a pretty big investment in the early game. Cyclones are actually kind of expensive, especially when you're yeah. building them two by two like it is like now. Even three uh, three Cyclones on this one. Three Cyclone cycle with uh, one Hellion, four Cyclone. He's gonna go full Cyclone on this game. Did he already take the gas on the natural? I don't think he did. No, no I, he's not. No, he's not. Yeah, he's just got the two gases at the main. He took them very early though to be able yeah. to bank this army off. So uh, 
Yeah, being able to afford to sacrifice two at a time here. Uh, he did make four, sorry, you're right. You're right. And then two at a time with the Hellions. Armory a little bit earlier as well this game. You gotta get those upgrades a lot quicker and you gotta turn those into hell that's really quick as well. The third hatchery is at the front here, right next to the main. The main very, very difficult to get into, especially against a player like Dark. Right, it's funny when you see those aliens, they, they could actually run to the main, you know, go, go YOLO and actually try to get some drones. But he wants to power up that push towards the third base. And I like that tiny transition from Innovation. He's actually taking a fight right now to that first Roaches. Oh, but wow. great transfusion and then transforming it into a Ravager Cocoon. That micro from Dark already is off the roof, but it's going to be still really, really hard to defend that push. That's right, a low hit point unit when turned into a Ravager does get its hit points back, and it is back in fighting form here. The Cyclones joining the fray and doing a very good job against Dark's army, actually. Starting to shred out those Roaches, and the Ravagers are all that's left without these Roaches coming in from the main. They are full hit, point, hit points now, fresh out of the egg. Okay, Innovation's probably not going to be able to break it, but all those three roaches in the red health pushes Dark to go back to his main and just, you know, gather up a little bit his forces to go back to the, towards that third base. Probably Innovation not going to be able to break this and maybe losing another cycle. No, it's going to be okay. But Dark defending pretty well this time. Once again, just losing Queens, nothing more. Well, two it Ravagers, to be honest. But yeah. <laughs> not, not that much. I guess, I guess this is still an even game. Um, with 42 drones against 49 SCVs, Dark needs to realize that he, that he needs to boost his, his, his income as soon as possible, but he's a little bit supply block. Yeah, a little, a couple uncharacteristic mistakes here from Dark in this game, but Innovation not really being able to capitalize too much on them. The third hatchery is not dead, it's still alive. It's very, very uh, uncommon to kill that hatchery, actually, in, in this matchup when the Zerg is uh, as good as Dark is. The Ravagers and the Roaches heading across the map for a counterattack. Plus one, not quite done for the mech army yet. Not Wouldn't be too far away now. Okay, seven Ravagers about to be eight to push towards that third base. And actually, the common center is getting built on the low ground. So he could get a cancel if he was to, uh, to, uh, to take a perfect fight. But at the moment, just kiting away. Corrosive Vile against Cyclones just going back after uh, dealing a little bit of damage. He's actually pull pulling SCVs to defend that attack. He's feeling the pressure, man. Yeah, the SCVs are actually battling with the units to try and mess with their uh, with their shots here instead of repairing the units. And it's just to make sure that the Roaches are shooting them instead of his mech army. They are, the uh, the Hellions now turning into Hellbats, getting amongst it here, but losing eight SCVs in that attack, Dark just needs to leave and be happy with that. Yeah, and it, that's exactly what he's going to do. Throwing down double Evo Chamber, getting the uh, Gladiator reconstitution for the roaches so just setting up for the next step of this game I'm not gonna break you right now I'm not gonna get the cancel on the third CC so just trading units and keeping those highly costly ravagers alive which is a really really great idea both um, uh, plus one carapace and plus one range getting research at the moment and the hydro is there absolutely hydra is a lot stronger now in fact, Lurk is quite nice against Mech as well if you wanted to go down that path, but even just straight Hydra, pretty good here. There's Dark, practically praying, and Innovation. Cool, calm, and collected as always. The Machine using his Mech army heading across here towards that fourth location of Dark. He knows the timings, he knows it's going down, and he wants to cancel it and force a kill here on this hatchery. The army of Innovation is getting a little bit low. Nice micro from Innovation, though, being able to dodge these vials. Whoa, great like concave. One connecting there. Great yeah. concave and, and great micro. He's actually going to get the fourth kill. hatch. That was a kill, Maynard. That's right. 300 minerals in the drain there for Dark, denying that fourth hatchery while he gets his third all saturated and ready here. Innovation once again with a lovely work account. 67 SCBs has more workers than the Zerg. Yeah, and this is a great situation, great, a uh, great spot to be in as a Terran player, especially building that amazing make army who's gonna fend off so well against the ro Roaches and Hydralisk. And le le last game, the difference uh, was made by Dark thanks to the Viper. He's not here yet. He doesn't have the technology to get those Vipers. No hive on the way at the moment. So innovation, if he can hit a timing, probably with the 2-1 upgrades once again, maybe he can kill Dark, and I really, really do enjoy his position at the moment. Now, Varney's one of these maps where you can abuse the back expansion by drop play. A lot of room for you to unload units and catch your opponent unawares, unless they've built structures or sensor towers or something like that around the outside. Very, very easy to catch unawares and get amongst that production. It looks like that is the plan for Dark here. Single drop of Lord heading towards the south, towards Innovation's uh, backdoor natural. Mm -hmm. And he lacks the vision uh, on this side. You you mentioned the sensor tower. There is none, but he can actually feel it. You know, he four cyclones just going towards that uh, that location in anticipation for a drop uh, from dark. So uh, just 
you know, perfect play out of Innovation, who actually built also yeah. two turrets to be uh, to be safe against this. You can actually tell that that uh, Hydra, a Ravager composition, is crossing the map to get a little bit of damage done, probably around the third base, while he's dropping. I like Innovation. Uh, innovation's position is, is yeah, he looks very prepared. Well for this. defended. Yeah, a couple turrets gonna maybe even deflect this attack from Duck. No, Duck does unload anyway, and the Cyclones are gonna easily be able to clean this up. Easy, easy defense, perfect by Innovation. And this is looking like a great 2-1 timing that's not going to be uh, received by Vipers from the, the, the Zerg player. So Doc is, uh, will have to be in a perfect position, either flanking, you know, he keeps scanning, he, keeps, he, he wants to too. know, he's like, you don't have a hive? I guess it's time for me to just cross the map and probably kill you. Look at all these mech units, such a powerful army from Innovation. 20 supply above on the uh, the Roach Ravager Hydra army here on oh. Dark. He's taking a lot of shots here on the high ground. Innovation does take the high ground, but the Vials are connecting. The Roaches and the Hydras doing great damage to the mech army Innovation. The tanks remain unseized at the back here, but their unseized DPS is still quite good. Yeah, the mission for, uh, for Dark is kind of obvious. He needs to gain time. He needs to be able to uh, produce those all almighty important Vipers to, uh, to receive that that amount of tanks because without any uh, any blinding clouds he's gonna get destroyed by the huge damage output of those new tanks. Mass Hydral is taking the fight right the, uh, at, the, at the moment and getting some cyclones and a lot of damage done. That's right, some tanks on siege, some, a few of them siege in a lovely spot in the back here just so innovation can kite back to their Siege range, such a powerful, heavy hitting uh, anti armored splash damage unit, and Innovation is starting to close in on this fourth hatchery. Oh, yeah, he's so close. He's so close at the moment, he can actually taste the, the, the fourth hatchery. He's gonna, he's gonna be able, with those three tanks, to actually shoot at it. So now the he's pressure is totally real. He has the range to get all oh, those oh. roaches getting obliterated on the right side, and Dark is falling down on supply. This is not looking good for the Zerg player. The reinforcement of roaches evaporated to those tanks that were in range for innovation and this fourth hatchery is in so much trouble dark is in so much trouble the vipers not even in the field here vibes done and dark can't afford to make them right now he has to make units oh he has to make units but i don't know if they're gonna be there in time those hydrolines they're gonna pop from those eggs but they're gonna get destroyed burnt instantly by those hellbats and cyclones oh, even the eggs getting destroyed before even the hatching and innovation no problem whatsoever is going to unsiege and get in closer to that third base. Oh, Dark, Dark is in a lot of trouble. He is indeed. He's got four base Terran against three base Zerg. The third base has to be evacuated. The drone's being pulled here. Dark is in so much trouble. Innovation moments away from tying the series here. Barring a massive mistake here from this player. Just 14 roaches on the way here for Dark. Will it be able to make the difference? Dark pulling everything he's got. One last try here in game number two against Innovation. Not even needing to siege the majority of his army here. Innovation shreds the Zerg army. There is just too much. Innovation is going to go 1-1 one, one, one in this series. And Maynard, I'm feeling a prophecy right oh, there. Oh, it's a prophecy. This coming. is looking like a 3-2. Oh, GG. We got ourselves a series here. Innovation not going to go down without a fight. Oh, yeah. Playing once again that mech strategy, but doing it a little bit differently, but also getting through, uh, 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 getting his attack going a little bit faster, just slowing down a little bit dark in his uh, in his mission to get Vipers and getting that fight, that Roach Hydra fights against tanks and Cyclone without Vipers. Well, you've seen what happened. He gets demolished, and that's a 1-1 one -one series now. The lack of Vipers definitely being felt there by Dark. If he managed to get those, those uh, that hive out in time, if Innovation wasn't so on point with knowing when the hive was being built, that scan, you said it when it happened. Let's just see after he scanned that hive, he's like, you know what, nerd? You are in trouble. Here yeah. I come. That, and, I think that's the greatest feeling as a, as a Terran player, or like, and I would say a, a mech Terran player, is that you, you need to know the, those timings. You need to know where that hive is gonna, is gonna finish. Is he gonna have Viper? Is he gonna have Ultra? Is or Blue Lords? Even like um, whatever late game tra technology that he, that he could have to fend you off. And you scan it and you're like, I think my timing is gonna hit way earlier than that. So I'm pretty sure if I, if, I don't, if I don't do anything stupid, I'm gonna win this game. You feel super confident just crossing the map and getting that win for yourself. And pretty much a perfect game there from Innovation. Oh, yeah. Very few mistakes. He was ready for the drop play. He was ready for every single engagement there in that game. I mean, the one time he took damage, he, he needed to use those SCVs to make sure his mech units stayed alive there in the early game, defending that third CC at the front. 
And we are getting ready very, very soon for game number three, guys. Not too long. Hope you guys are enjoying it out there in Twitch land, watching from home, wherever you may be around the world. If this is very, very early in the morning for you, or very late, however you want to look at it, I'm sure this one's keeping you awake. Oh yeah, passion keeps you awake. And with the TVZ of that level, it's going to be uh, such a great day of StarCraft 1-1 one, one at the moment. And we're going to go to that third game, Mainer. That's right, third game on the way here. The semi-finals match number one between Dark and Zerg. Uh, Dark, the Zerg, and Innovation, the Terran. One apiece. 